didn't he just do that? It may be a small blip for Joe Biden, but by our reckoning, as you just heard in that clip, it is the first time an incumbent president has lost a primary since Jimmy Carter lost states to Ted Kennedy in 1980. And I'm pleased to say he is back with us on the programme. Fresh from his triumph in Pago Pago, Jason Palmer. Very good evening. Many congratulations to you. Hey, great to see you again. Thanks so much for having me on. So how did you do it? I'm feeling great, actually. I love the people of America and Samoa, and I'm honored that they chose me as their choice yesterday. Did you go? I mean, have you been meeting the 100 people who voted in American Samoa? Actually, I did a number of virtual town halls, and I hired three wonderful workers on the ground. I want to give a shout out to Miracle, who led the team and did a fantastic job. But no, I haven't visited American Samoa yet, but I'm really looking forward to visiting. So you get, what do you get, six delegates? to go to the convention uh, there's with? six delegates uh, sorry six delegates total and i've won three and joe biden has won three all right so you share them but so dean phillips has withdrawn today are, are you staying in the race well i seem to be on the upswing so yes i'm staying in the race and i also think i have some important messages that most of the american people still haven't heard which we talked about last time about conscious capitalism about the new collar economy about moving our country forward and restoring the American dream. Uh, these are still very important issues, and I think they need to be aired in this campaign. So, yes, I'm continuing on. I'm taking that as an exclusive, that you're staying in the race. But on a serious note, you are, you're, you're very much right. It's the policies and the issues which the American electorate want, because I think right now out there, Jason, there's probably, what, about 100 million people who feel politically homeless. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and I'm also going to take the advantage on your show to announce something new as well. So in addition to running for president and trying to get these issues both on the national radar, part of the Democratic national platform, I'm also going to be launching a new organization in the next few weeks called Together, with an exclamation point. Its whole goal is to get more young people engaged in democracy, registered to vote, actually engaging with mission-driven causes and people from both the right and the left and the center. Uh, we're going to color the organization as purple because we really want to let everyone know that everyone is invited to this organization. We're going to take our politics back, basically. It's not going to be for the crazies on either side of the spectrum. It's going to be for the 80% of us in the middle who want common sense solutions and who want good government where we work mm -hmm. together. Jason, stay there, because I'd like to bring Miles in, in on that, because that, I know that is a direction that both, in fact, both Miles and Stephanie work in this direction with young voters. I mean, yeah. do you hear that, Miles, and, 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 and take a view that that is what the country needs more of, someone engaging with young voters? Well, I think you hear that. Uh, you know, when you talk to especially Gen Z voters, is this just enormous frustration with the political polarization in this country, uh, I can't imagine a better name and approach for an organization prepared to do this. I think we're all going to be frustrated that you took the name together uh, <laughs> because it's a it's a great approach to this. But I think it taps into the universal frustration you're feeling across the American electorate. And interestingly, as polarized as Americans are right now, when you dig into the crosstabs, they actually really want the catharsis of working in a bipartisan manner. So on the surface, we're a really divided country, but when there are opportunities to cross the aisle, people report their delight and excitement to get to work together again. So we need more bridge building for sure. Do you do you feel that especially within the young African American community, Stephanie? Because I, I was listening to uh, an interview that that uh, we did on BBC Panorama with with a, a young black taxi driver the other day, and and I don't mean to be facetious to Joe Biden, but he sees him as a dinosaur. Uh, he doesn't see people like him in politics. Yeah, I think that's a, a young voters or, or young people's issue broadly, um, aside from race, uh, aside from geographic location. Uh, we know that a number, and not even just young people. I mean, one of the, the challenges that we're having is that a 25 to 40 year old uh, age group of folks who feel very much um, disenchanted. They they feel as though uh, politics does not you know produce results that impact and improve their lives. And um, and so I think that is this has become an American problem <laughs> where mm. people feel as though uh, the folks who are elected to represent and reflect them and, and champion their issues and causes are not listening, are more so concerned with their own agendas and not of 
both, um, you know, actually having real solutions and when necessary, you know, reaching across the aisle to make um, to make decisions that actually benefit um, yeah. benefit everyone. So there you go, Jason, in the together spirit, there's two people that you can hook up with uh, in in your new movement uh, to engage young voters. I've got to ask you a little bit about about American Samoa because there might be people watching. Sure. Um, it's, a, it's a really interesting thing because the, the, there's only a very small electorate, of course, and they don't get to vote in a general election. They only get to vote in this primary and they've put their faith in you. So, so what responsibility do you take for that? I think I have huge responsibility uh, and I am honored that they've given me that responsibility. You know, when we looked at all 15 Super Tuesday states, we also focused on Colorado, Vermont, Minnesota. We did not do as well in those three states. Um, and part of why we chose American Samoa as a place to focus, and notice that pronunciation, everybody pronounces it a little bit wrong, then mm. the locals actually prefer Samoa. Samoa, um, okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, this campaign was built on focusing on civility, bringing the country back together, inclusion, and our team unanimously said, you know what, if we're all about inclusion, we need to focus on the people of American Samoa, who probably their voices are not elevated enough. People don't understand that they're not even American citizens. They're actually American nationals. It's actually, you have to fly off the island, a very expensive proposition to go to Hawaii in order to get your citizenship. If I become president, one of the first things I'll do is actually put an office right there on the island. So it'll be easy for people to get their citizenship. They only have one hospital for 50,000 people. And I listened to a number of people talk to me about how they wanted to get into healthcare, but they don't even have have the ability to get master's and graduate degrees on the island because their college is only a community college. It only awards associate degrees. So there, you know, there's an education infrastructure upgrade that they need, a healthcare system upgrade that they need, and, and even basic citizenship. Their votes need to count and they need to be able to become citizens more easily. Yeah. Well, it's an important message that for the, the biggest economy in the world, you would think that they could at least put a passport office uh, on the island. In terms of your campaign, what, what happens after something like that last night, which must have it, it must have been seen in the White House? Did you get a call from anyone in the Democratic Party? Did you get a call from any donors? Uh, you know, I have gotten a call from a number of donors and then also a number of my own supporters. My phone completely blew up. I didn't realize that the caucus was going to end so early. They're six hours behind us and they actually ended at 3.30 uh, p.m. Eastern, which was much earlier than I expected, or 3.30 p.m. their time, uh, 9.30 Eastern. And, um, you know, at this point, I'm recommitting to the campaign. I might have already committed to making sure that the issues got elevated and on the table. We're still going to go ahead and launch together sooner rather than later. Together is also going to support 20 uh, candidates who are running for Congress this fall, uh, who also commit to being part of the Problem Solvers Caucus, that they commit to bringing the country together, working across party lines. It actually, I think, will be quite easy to uh, convince 20 uh, folks who are running for Congress that will help them with funding their campaign and marketing them uh, if they choose to be part of this new common sense center mm -hmm. coalition. And, you know, I'm really looking forward mm -hmm. to continuing to advance the issues. But like I said to you the first time we talked, I'm realistic that I'm a long shot. Joe Biden's an incumbent president. He's got 99% of the delegates right now. And But we need to energize young people and center left, center right people if we're going to win in November. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Re remember the pact that we made, though, Jason, if you get there. Hey, you the, remember it, too. I remember. I, I, you if get I to the Oval Office, yeah. I'm the first interview, right? That's the, that's the deal. That's right. That's, that's the deal. Right. OK. Uh, so are you ex just before I let you go, are you expanding the, the campaign? Are you taking on more people or...? Well, it depends on how the fundraising goes. So I do want to do a shout out to people. Go to palmerforpresident.us. Uh, we have an Act Blue right there. You can click on and donate. We're loving the $25, $10, $50 mm -hmm. donations that we're getting from people who want a more inclusive and more uh, work together oriented approach. Um, you know, but I don't actually have campaign funds to hire a lot more people. I, I want to tell you that the amount of marketing and spend I did on American Samoa was only $5,000. I probably spent about the same as the Biden campaign did there. You know, if I had millions to compete against them on a fair playing field in Colorado, in Utah, Texas, California, other states, 
it's possible I would have mm. won in those states too, but I just don't have those kind of funds. I'm a, a guerrilla upstart campaign. You tell them that you get airtime on the context, Jason. I guarantee you the money start to flow in. Absolutely guaranteed. Listen, it's lovely to see you again. Many congratulations on your win last night and we wish you the best of luck with your Together campaign. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Around the